Yeah, so um, the topic, as you as you saw, is Learnify Your Daily Work. Maybe Marcel and myself can um, quickly introduce ourselves. So we are um, working in the IT um, in Continental, and I'm a change manager in digital workspace. Um, and we are together in the uh, digital workspace department. And that's also, um, well, that was the first step <laughs> before when we did this project. Basically, we were not in one department yet, but... Um, now we are <laughs> we are uh, even working really more close together on this topic also still. Yeah, maybe also one effect of the project. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a little bit, of course. Yeah, so um, I'm a solution manager, mainly for SharePoint Online currently, and of course in uh, close alignment with other Microsoft service owners, especially for Teams and for OneNote and so on. So we are driving the topic of social collaboration with uh, tools like Microsoft, but also other tools um, like uh, Connections. So, so you will see it in, in the next slide. And yeah, we are driving also some topics like social learning, which are really something which we are driving from a passion, yeah, from, from our own um, intention. And that's what we want to show you with that pilot project today. Thank you, Marcel. So yeah, how um, did the project basically look like? What was our plan? So as um, Steffi just mentioned, our focus was really um, um, based on this uh, quote, um, work is learning and learning is the work. So um, we wanted to pilot basically learning circles um, to yeah, um, focus on topics which are directly connected to our daily work. So really learn where we are um, doing our daily work. And um, that's why we said um, if, if we want to learn together within small learning circles or also small communities, so to say, um, then let's use also the tools which we are using in our daily work, basically. So, for example, let's um, um, have the learning content available in a tool like OneNote. Um, let's share our learning results in an open channel um, in a later stage of the uh, learning circle, what you learn basically during the journey um, in a tool like um, for us internally, our enterprise social network, it's called Connext. And also beforehand, if you have any results um, shared, for example, uh, via SharePoint um, and the uh, communication within the learning circles should be um, taking place also within the environment where we usually work together, collaborate together also. And in our case, it's basically uh, Teams, our main collaboration tool. And um, there we, we set it up, for example, a Teams team uh, with um, channels where the participants of the uh, pilot could yeah, exchange with each other. And we as the project leaders and the project team, we could also exchange with the participants. And you see also there's one really important topic um, included the social video, um, because we said, okay, if we look at um, the topic of learning, video plays an important role. Um, I mean, outside of um, the organization, uh, most um, common learning tool, that's for example, YouTube. And within the organization, we are using, for example, Stream, Microsoft Stream. And we wanted to enable the participants during the learning journey to um, create their own videos, for example. So, Therefore, for example, um, we always um, 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 spread it during the learning journey, some learning bites um, to enable them to create video or also audio like podcast, um, their own audio uh, podcast, for example. And which yeah. kind of learning journeys did we, um, did we introduce basically? So Marcel, if you, if you want to add something, feel free to do so. <laughs> <laughs> it's only I wanted to add that we uh, we named them learn hacks or work hacks to help the users during the learning journey also to get more into the media production area, also to create their own little learning bites and providing them in their um, in their circle, um, in their groups. And later on, of course, if they expand it and make it transparent to others also in the learning community around. Thank you. And there, in the end also of the um, project, when people, uh, the participants uh, came up with their final results, there were even also really great uh, videos, learning videos um, uh, coming out 
or even um, uh, vlogs, uh, which were established. So yep. yeah, that was really good. Cool. <laughs> and and um, which kind of um, learning journeys did we use? Basically, mm -hmm. we piloted two new ones. Um, so there uh, was the ePortfolio learning journey created um, and the content creation learning journey also um, um, by myself. <laughs> and it's also provided in the Learn LearnOS um, community. And um, there we said, okay, let's try these both um, methods and enable the participant regarding this um, topics. Are there any questions so far? <laughs> I heard already a great comment. <laughs> <laughs> I put also the link for the LearnOS guide um, in the chat. Uh, it was resolved in a wrong way, but no problem. Yeah, it should work. Yeah, so here you can uh, have a look on the English uh, Learning Circle guide for ePortfolio learning, which we also choose. Yeah, but on the next slide, you will see more what it is all about. <laughs> Short of you, yes. Yeah, uh, and even in a great sketch note. So, yeah. What is meant with eat portfolio learning? Basically, um, here the focus is on the um, learner um, directly, so more self-directed learner. And um, yeah, the, the person should really learn how to make their own learning visible, um, how to um, create basically their own e-portfolio. And by this, uh, re reflect also on their learning and um, um, later, you see it here also in, in the weeks, later in the weeks, you learn also how to um, um, publish your learning, your e-port for your learning, for example. And then, of course, you get some feedback, um, you get more reflection, and um, um, there are also maybe then good discussions going on regarding your topic. Do you have something to add here, Marcel? <laughs> Uh, maybe from from a perspective, what topics could be covered here? Um, it's of course mainly self self selected further education topics like autonomous driving, like AI or artificial intelligence or augmented reality or uh, e mobility. So of course, for us in the automotive industry, these are the trend topics. But of course, this could be any other um, further education topic you are driving in your company or in your community of learning. Exactly. Great, thanks. I was also just thinking regarding community management since this um, this uh, community manager um, call, of course, um, ePortfolio Learning, it's also a really great method for community managers um, to yeah um, show or yeah, practice um, to show their own learning outside uh, within a community, for example. And um, also, content creation is quite uh, closely connected to communities. So, um, in the content creation circle guide, basically, the focus is more on the um, self directed topic of learning. So, um, you choose, for example, in the beginning, a topic where you would like to focus on. Um, we had, uh, for example, in our pilot, um, uh, some people who said, okay, I really would like to, within my team, focus on AR, VR. Um, I already tried to focus on it the whole year. I never had time. And then they said, okay, let's use this learning journey. So really work on topics which um, they um, need to look at during their daily work anyway. And um, with this guided learning journey, um, create something in the end regarding this topic. So um, they really mm -hmm. learned how to filter, how to find sources, how to do quality checks in this guide, and then also how to publish it outside in communities, for example. And and to maybe to get a differentiation between both. So on the one side, the portfolio learning is more on, this, on the learner itself and his development and the reflection on the learning in the community. And more, the content creation is more focusing on the topic itself and all around the topic, the quality check, the fake news arrangement, yeah, that you really are um, uh, aware of that some some fake news are around and you check the, the quality and you do a curation of that. Mm -hmm. If you look at the learning circle setup itself, um, 
in our pilot now we had like eight uh, learning circles and uh, we also said we want to uh, pilot um, learning tandems so two people who met every week and um, discussed the topics with each other and um, in total we had 45 participants also a great number of 70 um, circle finisher how did this learning journey mm -hmm. look like um, so um, it started with week zero if you have done a learner as um, um, circle already then you might know this always starting with week zero where the participants in our case now had to figure out which um, learning circle guide they wanted to choose which topic they want to focus on and then um, they started together with their learning circles um, within the community um, the learning journey basically and then, in our case, in the project, we started last year in October and finished um, in March. And what was important, we said, okay, we would like to come together with the learning community um, all together, um, personally also um, in between. So we set up two pit stops where we discussed uh, where they are, we um, answered questions, um, gave feedback we received in the second pit stop, also a good overview. Um, what they were working on already, saw already some results. And then we realized also in the middle that um, uh, because it was over Christmas time that maybe we need some uh, reactivation after Christmas. Um, so that's something what you cannot see here, but we said, okay, let's, let's do kind of a campfire, virtual campfire, meet together, have a fishbowl discussion about the topic social learning, um, also together with um, some members out of our project um, steering board. That was also um, quite good to um, bring them back on track, basically. But from our experience, what we learned is to make such learning circles or to concentrate these learning circles more over the year and not over the Christmas break, because some <laughs> some of the colleagues were really then in a rush hour mode at the end of the year, logically, yeah. So and then they made it a uh, it was it was a little bit complicated to get them into the circle back then or to get them at the end of the year in in this uh yeah quite intrinsic mode of learning while uh, while they were working together yeah so it's more to um yeah propose to do it in uh in in, in spring or to do it in autumn and until the end of the year and right away yeah. mm -hmm. Yeah, so also before Christmas, there, there are people quite busy. So uh, that could have been a better time frame um, if it would have not been a project. <laughs> yeah, it was it one of the learnings to... of the yes. pilot. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, yeah, we just want to quickly show you some um, results, what we also did. Um, um, so, or how we coordinated the project basically. And so I mentioned already um, that we did um, the collaboration communication through a Teams team. And um, there we prepared, for example, um, a OneNote for our organizational team and where we always um, had a drafted beforehand before the next week, um, the, the text, the content, which we wanted to uh, push in this Teams team. Um, to teaser the next topic, basically. It, it was just a, yeah, a quick overview, what's it about in the next week, on this uh, current week, and um, also um, yeah, um, to activate them, basically, and remind them that uh, they now should continue with the next topic. Yeah, some weekly news and some infos about uh, the katas, the exercises, and also um, at least some um, some final um, discussions or conclusions about um, what to learn and also what is a nice learn hack and so on. Yeah. And then in the end, we um, also came together. So basically, um, in the beginning, of course, we had a kickoff. In the end, we had a closing event. And um, there, um, the participants, they also had the chance to share in small lightning talks their results. And um, then we offered also a surprise or um, yeah, showed them also how learning could also work. We heard in, in the um, in the keynote, which we just heard, basically that gamification also plays a role. So we said, okay, let's um, create a treasure hunt, and uh, we were quite lucky to use the um, work adventure environment of Simon here and um, build a treasure hunt in there. So um, we 
I did some riddles in the room in the Cognion Academy, basically. And um, the participants, they had to solve the riddles. And then in the end, with um, the uh, final password, so to say, they could um, find the badge, which you can see here on the right side also. Yeah, and um, if we now um, look at the success measurements, um, you will get uh, deeper insights in a minute from Marcel also. And um, just to um, share also with you what we are doing now after the project, because of course the topic social learning should not finish after the project. Um, we said it should be more um, even integrated into existing programs to really continue. And um, there we were quite lucky to collaborate, for example, also with HR to integrate it in, in, in learning structures, but also um, to collaborate with um, um, colleagues out of the learning team. Um, so we have a learning business partner program, for example, where we now um, integrated the learning circles basically in the next learning business partner program. So it will continue. And that's, um, yeah, that was really important to us also that it's somehow sustainable also in the future. Yeah. So it reached and increased the learning community around where we also mm. get more contacts and people who are interested in because we made visible the results. Yeah. So the users and the colleagues, uh, who, the participants who were uh, in that pilot project made their learning visible to others and then they get new new dots in the in the network in the community and get more appreciation by others and also some new perspectives for ongoing projects mm -hmm. and um yeah uh, i mean we did we did a project um beforehand we had already such uh, um, learning journeys or working out loud already within the com uh, company um so there were other um um, social learning journeys available. So that's also why we created the social learning hub, which you can see here also. Um, and um, with this project, as Marcel said, we really um, set the importance on a, on a higher level, I would say. So that was really good. That's also what the results show. So oh, the, the results were really beneficial in that case. Yeah, maybe let's let's use the I think around about five minutes left. Um, let's oh, use them. Minutes, right? Or 10 minutes until yeah. 20 past. Okay, okay, that's good. Um, so a little bit more, that's good. <laughs> and of course you can uh, also interrupt and, and place your questions if you like. Um, we had um, a guided master thesis around from Technical University of Ilmenau, Selina, who was uh, supporting us as the master student and he did the the central research research question to what extent does the use of learning circles really affect the success of learning of employees at continental ag and also what makes maybe also the the influencer culture around yeah when somebody is in a community or is building up his own vlog um, in stream as you know it also from youtube there are sometimes also they get a little bit prominent like vips in in, in the uh, in the company that they really are followed by others and they get um, awareness um, because their content is interesting and we researched that yeah we had to look on how the media competen competency or literacy is evolving how the methodological competency evolves and also how the knowledge acquisition is about yeah and yeah maybe something about the theoretical framework around that was the kirkpatrick model from 65 um, where we really focused on level one reaction and level two learning so what was the first reaction on the learning circle and what was the learning all about? And the three dimensions um, on the next slide um, are covered mainly um, uh, for media competency. So how was the active creative use of media, the creation uh, process? How were the learning circles and the circle guidelines used from a methodological point of view? And how was the how were, how were the users, the participants, feeling about what they learned? Uh, did they have a knowledge acquisition? Did they increase their knowledge about the topic or not? Yeah, and the central results um, were covered by by this study here. So we did the mixed method design. So it was um, on the one side interviews and on the other side surveys. We had on in the beginning of the pilot a survey and in the end to see also the trend, how it evolves. And in between, we had these interviews to get also some qualitative feedback by the users if they are feeling 
confident with it, if they like the, the learning journey and what else, yeah. Okay, yeah, here you see um, the content of the interviews. So it was mainly driven by the main uh, dimensions we were asking for and the surveys on the levels of reaction. How is the satisfaction with the circles? How motivated they were? And also on the self-assessment, um, how they really increased their, their media literacy and their knowledge. Okay, let's have some looks or insights into what came out of that. Yeah, so we had on the one side some praise. So more than um, three quarters of the participants were very satisfied or even satisfied. We had an increased exchange of knowledge that was also perceived very positively. And we had, of course, also um, um, yeah, something like a high fun factor. Yeah? So the users were really enjoying the learning with each other in their circles and also uh, around the circles in the learning community. But on the other side, um, the guideline was a little bit uh, criticized because of the length. Yeah? So there were a lot of texts in it, of course, also some pictures and also some videos. But um, the length of the of the text should be a little bit decreased, and there should be maybe some more explanations about um, the the yeah the experience upfront. So what would be the right choose? Yeah? Would it be content creation? Would it be ePortfolio learning? That the users know from the beginning which learning journey would would uh, fit in the best way for them. And of course, the company should promote persons with experience and motivation to use that, to, to become su such an influencer, to uh, make up transparent their, their e-portfolio to other learners in the community. What else do we see? Um, on the level of, uh, of knowledge acquisition, there were different results. On the one side, we had the whole group, that means the inter-individual um, results. There we, sh we really could see a clear increase in knowledge and a positive tendency to re reflect about the content. And on the other side, we have the intra-individual results where the users really uh, responds to us from the beginning and in the end. Yeah, And we could also see via an anonymously ID um, that was the, the same user who reacted in the first glance and in the second glance. And here we saw that the knowledge acquisition was at the end on a high level, but it, it doesn't increase anymore. It didn't increase anymore. So they had their topic and when they found their topic, they really get deep into it. But at the end of the, of the learning circle, there was no real new knowledge acquisition. They did and spread the word then into the round, into the community. Maybe the next slide. Ah, yeah. Um, what was the best learning situations? They were um, expectedly, uh, so we expected that result and it was confirmed here, the group work and the searching and finding of, of information, but mainly the group work, which really enjoyed, uh, where, the, where the participants really enjoyed the environment. And on the other side, um, we could really see that um, the network creation, the building of the network was one of the, the main, um, yeah, uh, the main results of that of that journey. Yeah, and maybe some last um, last aspects, and then we are fine. So we saw also on the media competency, we saw that the users could increase that uh, on an on a high level. So a lot of users were already very competence based in the use of their social collaboration tools, but they even learned a little bit more. So it's not highly effective here, but it was increasing as you can see also in the box plot on the right side. And they really learned how to create media, especially, of course, video and vlogs, and also how to blog, how to present their knowledge to others in a blog, for example. And finally, also methodological um, competence. And that was really um, the most impressive um, result. So we really see, uh, you see it via the box plots here, we see um, an increase of, um, yeah, of the, of the usage of the knowledge about how to use learning circles, how to use ePortfolio learning for your daily work and to bring it to others. Yeah, so this was one of the very positive effects of um, the setting of learning circles. And it helped us also not to see the, um, or to feel that it really brings something or that it helps the users to engage and to learn with each other. You can see it also via the where the numbers, the facts, and the figures that it really helped the users here. Yeah, that is the main, these are the main points. There is something more about influencer culture, but I think this would be 
too much now for for the session. Um, so we will provide the slides and you will see also a little bit the recommendations. The key results are that participants who uh, join a learning circle, um, they really could use it for deepen a topic to reflect the knowledge and to increase their media literacy. And yeah, they find it entertaining and inspiring. That were the, the, the key results. Thanks a lot for your attention. And yeah, please feel free. One or two questions. We still have one minute. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot.